Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today we've got a fun tutorial lineup. We're going to take a look at creating this text effect where we go in and manually add our own little shadows to sort of fake this depth. It really takes uh, text to the next level. It's a little labor intensive, but it's really cool when it's done. Um, and here is how we go about doing it. Now, before we get started with the tutorial, I want to let you guys know I'm selling a course. It's over on tutfit.com. A link just appeared up in the top corner of the video there. It's all about how to retouch images. If you pick up a copy of the course, not only are you going to learn a bunch about Photoshop and how to do all kinds of amazing stuff in Photoshop, but more importantly, you support what we're doing here at tutvid.com. It's really the best way to give back other than like subscribing and sharing these videos with your friends. It allows me to keep doing this and dedicating more and more time to doing this and getting tutorials out every single day and day after day after day. And I absolutely love it. And I want to make them bigger and better and stronger and faster and every other positive attribute for something like this. And by supporting what we're doing here, that's the best way to do it. But this tutorial here is free. So let's jump into it and check it out. Here is the completed effect, and we're going to just go through how to do uh, exactly what you see here on the screen. Uh, I'm going to just get out of full screen view mode here, and you can see I have a document here. I've got a solid color fill layer. It's just this 20 uh, 0 2 1 C. It's a very, very dark, almost desaturated purplish background. And then I just threw some grain on top of it, just a soft light uh, layer, just 50% gray with the noise filter in Photoshop. And the opacity is reduced to 30%. So just some grain to give it some texture. And then the color scheme, and this is a little important here, I went and I got from coolers.co. And it's a really cool site where you can just, you know, bring up their uh, color generator and hit the space bar. And every time you hit space bar, it's going to generate a new color scheme. You can hit the lock icon to lock a color in and generate random colors around that. Well, not really random, but colors that are kind of going to work together and build out a beautiful color scheme that you can use for your project. So it's a super uh, easy way to do this. And then I usually like to go export PNG and then right click on the PNG, copy the image and just paste it right into my document that I'm working on in Photoshop. That's what I've done here. Color scheme. So we've got this color scheme. Uh, I'm going to select my grain layer and we're going to begin this whole thing uh, by grabbing the text tool and I'm going to type out a word. Well, I'm going to open up my character panel first. I'm going to show you. I'm using a type called Bukhari script. Um, and I believe this is a free font and it can be any color you want it to be. I'm going to use the size of 300 points here and I'm going to, I don't want superscript or subscript or any of that stuff turned on. So I'm going to just hover and drop my uh, character panel back in place and I'm going to click once and I'm going to type out the words most uh, girls. I don't know why I picked these two words, but it just, I don't know, it just popped into my head while I was working on this originally and that's what I did, most girls. So I'm going to do that here uh, with this as well. So you can see we've got this here in the center of our document and we want to apply a gradient overlay to this text. So I'm going to double click right out here in the layers panel on the most girls text layer. There we go. And I'm going to tick on gradient overlay. Now it's going to give me just the standard default black to white gradient. Uh, I don't want that. I want to set the angle to zero, number one. So that's going to run, you know, just very linearly across my document, black to white. And I need to create a new gradient. So I'm going to select my gradient stripe and I'm going to add two gradient stops here. So I'm going to add a white one there. I'm going to set the location to 33. I'm going to set one out here and I want it to be about 66%. So here for this black color stop, I'm going to hover and choose like that teal color. There we go. For my second color stop, I'm going to choose that dark purple color. For my third color stop, you probably guessed it, I'm going to go with that yellowish color. And for my fourth color stop, I'm going to grab that orange color. Hit OK. And I'm going to hit OK once again. We can see the gradient that we have over our text. It looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK once more. Next, what I want to do is create a new layer above this layer, new layer. And I'm going to name this layer Shadows. And what I need to do is clip this layer to the Most Girls layer. I can use the hotkey Command Option G. That's Control Alt G on the PC. On this Shadows layer, I'm going to zoom in here. What I like to do is just kind of take a look and figure, like, I probably want a shadow to be, like, right there and, like, right there and maybe up here into the O and then somehow coming out of the O and into the S. I definitely want one here in the top of the S and then either on this part of the S here or up here into the T. I'll probably put one on the bottom of the cross on the T. I need one here underneath the loop at the bottom of the G. 
uh, probably up here where the R, you know, kind of loops around and does its little thing at the bottom of the R, and then do the same thing over here on the S. So I'm just kind of looking over the letters first and picking out, like, okay, all these different areas where I'm going to need shadows. Now, the easiest way, in my opinion, to go ahead and start doing this is to use the pen tool. Um, and I know maybe you haven't used the pen tool and it's big and it's scary and all kinds of things. Don't be too intimidated by it. We're going to walk through how to create these basic shapes right now. Go ahead and select the pen tool. Make sure that we're drawing not a shape but a path. And I'm going to make sure that I'm just combining shapes as my as my kind of default drawing option here. Now I'm going to begin right here. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag out my tangent handles. And I want this to line up with this, the inside part of the M right here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to keep pulling until this top part of my path seems to align with the M properly. All right. Once I have that, I'm just going to roughly create a selection out around here and join my path. So I have this very rough selection. Now this is how I do this. I just load this as a selection by hitting Command Return. That's Control Enter on the PC. So we have our first selection. Now we want to grab our brush tool, right click, make sure we just have our basic brushes selected. So I'm going to hit this little flyout menu and choose Basic Brushes. I'm going to choose OK. It's going to replace those brushes. And I think I'm going to try going with the 100 pixel soft edge brush. It's actually a little bit too big. Maybe 60, maybe 48. Yeah, let's go 48. And I'm going to set the opacity of my brush tool here to something very low. Let's go like 10%. I'm going to go very, very low. Make sure your foreground color is set to black. Now we're up on this blank layer, shadows layer. It's clipped to most girls. So even if I painted my selection out here, nothing's going to be, nothing's going to show up because the only areas above my text are going to show up. Now, as we begin clicking and painting our shadow, notice the shadow is just not showing up. The reason that's happening is because the, the gradient here on the layer below is, is sort of like boss. It's not going to allow me to paint having this layer clipped. So that's going to take the clipping mask out of the equation. Under normal circumstances, using the clipping mask would be the best and easiest way to go. But because we're using this gradient overlay on the layer beneath, we can't really do that. Uh, so it's just an important thing to keep in mind when you're working in Photoshop. If you do something like this, where you have this gradient overlay on the layer beneath, here if I shut the gradient overlay off, you can see that all that black that I painted does in fact show up. Um, but Obviously, if we have our gradient turned on and we can't see the shadows, it renders the whole thing pointless. So we can leave our layer selected, our, our selection selected here. And what we can do is just simply unclip this layer by hitting Command Option G. That would be Control Alt G on the PC. And you can see our shadow is now going to spill off the layers. Don't worry about that. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm most concerned with, we're going to mask it to the layers in a moment. I'm going to grab my eraser tool here. And I'm going to just erase all that junk that I just painted, and we're going to start fresh here. So I'm going to grab the brush tool. We're painting at an opacity of 10 with the foreground color set to black, and I'm just going to gently paint in a little shadow. You really want to go subtle here. And then Command or Control D to deselect. If I zoom out, you can see we have our first little shadow. So now that we've sorted that out, let's grab the pen tool again. Whoop, zoomed in too far. Let's grab the pen tool once more, and I'm going to begin up here. We're going to go down to kind of the straight flat area of the uh, M. And I'm going to pull out a shape that's going to work for me. I'm going to hold down my Alter Option key here. Just adjust the top part of my shape. There we go, something like that. And then just, you know, a very rough shape. The only, the only the reason I'm doing this and making a very rough shape out here is because the only area I care about being precise uh, in is this little area right here. All right, and then Command Return, Control, uh, Enter on the PC, grab your brush tool. And once more, we're going to paint a little shadow in there. Right, just like that. Command or Control D to deselect. Look at that, a beautiful, smooth little shadow where our M comes right together. So now we can zoom in down here and we can do the same thing with the uh, M running into uh, the O. So let's go with like that and then select the, up to the flat part of the O, pull through, kind of, sort of, just like that. Hold down the Alter Option key. And I'm holding down Alter Option because it allows me to just quickly and easily adjust my tangent handle. And I'm just looking to have the path run exactly along the edge of the shape because the shadow is going to go on this side of the path. So let's create this over here. Boom. Command, return, control, enter to load that as a selection. And let's go ahead and paint our little shadow in place. All right, so you can see we're just getting a nice little shadow in there. Command or Control D to deselect. And you can see as we do this, it's going to really start to build out depth here for our shapes and do you know kind of a lot for us. Let me just refer to the original shape here. So what I did was I placed uh, the shadow on top of this part of the O and not the bottom. So I'm going to do the same thing here because I kind of dig the way that looks. So I'm going to begin with the pen tool here. I'm going to drag this right around, something like that. Hold down the Alter Option key, and I'm just going to adjust this. And hold down the Alter Option key, adjust this tangent handle. So just kind of as long as you're lined up on both areas, 
You know what I mean? It's The path is smoothly following the edge of the text there and over here. That's probably about where the text would run, right? But we can't really see the quote-unquote edge because obviously it's all the same color and it blends together. The shadow is going to help differentiate. Command, return, control, enter. Grab that brush tool again. Just go ahead and paint a little bit of a shadow. And don't worry if you're getting paint over the backdrop or, or the background. We're going to fix that uh, as one of the very last steps. We'll go ahead and fix that. All right, let's come into here now. And again, I'm just going to look. So I did the bottom part and the top part of the S like that. Okay, I'm just making sure that I'm, I'm remaining consistent here with what I did before. All right, let's just pull this. So what I'm looking at right now, I'm looking at this part of the S. I'm just, I'm concerned with lining that up. And then I'll come up here, see how this is off up here. Hold down my Alter Option key. Just drag that until it lines right up. And you can see everything's lined up beautifully. The shadow is going to be on the left side of my, my path. So I'm going to draw my selection out like that. Command Return, Control Enter to load the selection. And go in and paint a little bit of a shadow. Command or Control D to deselect. Great. And then I believe I'm also going to do the top of the uh, S over here. I'm going to link it up with this right here. And you can see I, I really could just breeze through this and speed it up, but I kind of just want to show you how I'm how I'm doing this now. I'm thinking about it. And I'm going to create my big selection this way. Boom. Command, return. We've got our selection. And go ahead and just paint a little shadow in place. So just these kind of hand-painted custom shadows. Oop, I'm going to undo. It's going to load my selection again. I'm going to make sure I get my shadow into all the areas that it needs to be. Command or Control D to deselect. And you can see we kind of we're almost done with the first word already. So you know it's kind of coming along nicely. Uh, let's go ahead, grab the pen tool again. I'm going to begin down here. I'm going to drag it up to the straight part of the T. And I'm looking for it to come right into the T nice and smoothly, but I need to come out of the bottom of the S smoothly as well. So this needs to be adjusted, something kind of like that. But you can see it knocks off the T up here. So let's, oops, let's hold down our Alter Option key and adjust again up here. Let's keep adjusting until it's going to give me something that I like. Maybe what I need to do is grab my Direct Selection tool. And that's underneath the Path Selection tool, Direct Selection tool. And I can actually select an individual anchor point. And I can just move that individual anchor point. And you can see just like that, that really helps kind of line things up a little bit. Sort of. Something maybe. Something kind of like that. Right, We run into the straight part of the T a little bit higher than I would like to, but maybe it'll look good. I'm going to hit the letter P to switch back to the pen tool, and I can just finish drawing that path. Go ahead and join the end of the path. Command, Enter, Control, uh, and the... Uh, I'm sorry, Command, Return, Control, Enter on the PC. Let's grab a brush tool again. Paint a little shadowy shadow in there. All right, that's going to look pretty good. Command or Control D to deselect. And you can see how it looks like it's just peeling right up the T. That's cool. Now for the, the little cross uh, bar on the T, we can just drag straight across like that and just create our selection down. This is an easy one. Again, because the edge that needs to be precise is just straight, so it's very easy. Command return, Control Enter. We're going to go ahead and paint in. Just a very kind of a subtle shadow I think this should get. Command or Control D to deselect. And you can see we have that little bit of shadow beneath the top part of the T. All right, let's come over here to the bottom of the G. I'm going to just paint or paint, select and draw the mat, uh, the mask, the path in place. I'm getting all my terminology mixed up. Ay, ay, ay. I need to just draw my path right around this way. Join the end of the path. Command, return, control, enter. Let's paint that little shadow in place. There we go. And you're going to see, especially here with the yellow, just look at how much that does. It just really adds depth uh, to this effect. And if we want, we could even do a tiny bit of a shadow across the top part of the G just to give a little separation. You really want to be careful not to go, like you don't want to match the shadow. I'll put it to you that way. You don't want to have as much shadow on the top as the bottom. It's going to really make it look not very realistic or good. But a really teeny tiny bit of shadow just to give a little bit of differentiation can look pretty cool. All right, Command or Control D to deselect. You can see how that really just sets it off just so cleanly and so nicely. All right, we're going to go ahead here. Get this part of where the G comes into the I. I'm going to pull down on that. Ooh, that lines up just about perfectly. Great. Join the end. Command, return, Control, enter. I don't know how many times I'm going to say that over the course of this tutorial, but you know what? As long as we're getting the point, that's really all that matters. There we go. Command or Control D to deselect. You can see how that just, when you zoom out, it really, you really get an idea of what the effect is doing. It's cool. Now here, this is going to be pretty neat. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here, and we're going to draw down across the back side of the R. Hold down my Alter Option key. We're going to adjust it right there. Make sure that's perfect. And we're going to draw here to get the shadow on the bottom part of the top of the R. All right, we're going to go ahead and just 
apply that shadow gently command or control D to deselect now up here this is where things are kind of interesting because we're going to kind of freelance a little bit we're going to come into the top of the R right about there I'm going to give a little bit of a curve upward all right out and around away from the R command return and now what we're going to do is start heavy with the shadow there maybe two or three clicks and then maybe like one or less clicks for the top part of the R up there. Command or control D to deselect. And you can see if you do it right, it really makes it look like a nice fold there on the top of the R. But the key is you want a little bit more shadow on this part than up here because it's really supposed to be fading out as the shape comes together and there's really no shadow there to be seen. So it gives a really beautiful effect when you do that. So that's pretty cool. In fact, that's what we should have done over here at the top of the S. I'm just remembering we didn't do that over here. So let's do that now before we forget. Let's do it just like that and create our shape. Voila. Command a return, control enter. All right, one, two, three, one, two, and another click there. All right, and you can see how we just get a nice tucked edge there at the top of the S, right? It's kind of cool. It really just adds to the three dimensionality of the whole thing. Let's do the bottom here where the R runs into the L. So good. Whoops. I accidentally let go with my mouse. Hold down the Alter Option key. Let's pull this tangent handle downward and then adjust the tangent handle back here. There we go. Great. Join that off. Command Return. I'm going to grab my brush tool again. We're just going to paint with our shadow. Kind of something like that. Command or Control D to deselect. I like to, I just zoom out a lot to take a look at it, make sure it's looking good. Now with the S, we want to do the same exact shadow. So the shadow on the back side and the top, and then the little twist a at the top there is kind of what we want to do for the S. So we're going to grab the pen tool, bring the sucker around this way. And again, I'm watching down here to make sure this lines up correctly first, and then I'll come back and adjust this tangent handle afterward. There we go. And then tweak this tangent handle if need be on the bottom. Great. I'll go ahead and create my selection, command return, and we're going to go ahead and just paint a little, little shadowy shadow down there on the bottom. Now up here at the top, we'll do the same exact thing. So much repetition, right? Don't worry, this is the stuff that leads to really amazing artwork in the end. All right, there we go. Cool. Command return. Let's go ahead and paint our little shadow in on the top. Again, I like to, especially on the top, I just don't like the shadows to be as strong um, because it just, I don't know, I just feel like it looks better or something. And then here, we're going to do kind of the same thing we did over on the other side. So we're going to just pull this up. There we go. Something like that. Voila. Command return. And it looks like I'm off by just like a pixel there, and that's going to look really funky. So what you can do if you're off by like a pixel and you've loaded your selection, grab any of the selection tools, and you can use the arrow keys and just nudge your selection by like one pixel or two pixels. Something like that looks right about perfect for us. And then go ahead and I'll start painting my shadow in one, two, three, probably four clicks. And a few additional clicks. There we go. Something like that. Then I'll zoom out. You can see I have virtually the same exact sort of uh, twisting return there for the top of the S. Now, one of the things that I could do here just to add a little bit of additional uh, va va voom to this effect is I could go in and create sort of like a custom cap here for the text and just sort of fade it out. Something like this. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. We'll see here in a moment. I'm just going to load that as a selection. We're going to paint a little shadow on this. Something like that. Command or Control D to deselect. And you can see it just gives it like a little bit of something there at the end. We probably should do it over there on the end of the T as well, but I'm not going to waste your time watching me do that as well because we've done enough shadow building. Now, remember, this is not masked to anything. So if we shut off the, um, the text layer, you get kind of this... I mean, if you build it out enough, you can get a really, really cool effect when you do this where it looks like the text is almost pressing from underneath the texture up into uh, the document. But all we can do or all we need to do at this point is just simply command or control click our text layer and just apply a layer mask to our shadow layers by just hitting the new layer icon here. And it's going to mask all of those shadows to just within our letters and get rid of anything that's kind of hanging out over the background. And maybe what I'll do here just to add like one additional graphical element to the background, I'll just duplicate my background layer or my, my background layer, my text layer. Most girls, I'll just hold down the alter option key, drag it up to the top, right click and just choose to clear the layer style and I'll fill it with like the orange here. So I'm going to select the orange with my eyedropper tool and then hit option delete. That's alt backspace on the PC. And then I'm going to go filter, pixelate, mosaic 
and Photoshop's can say, hey, you, this is type. You can't do this. You need to either rasterize it or convert it to a smart object. Let's convert it to the smart object. I'm going to give it a cell size of 40 square. That's perfect. And then hit Command or Control T. And it's going to say, hey, smart filters are temporarily going to be shut off. And I'm just going to scale the text up pretty big, kind of like that. And then you can see I, when I commit the change, I just get this kind of like boxy pixelated orange type. I'm going to drag it down beneath my text. And I'm going to set this layer to, I don't know, let's try like color dodge. You can see how it's giving me like that very hot pink color when it's interacting with that purplish background. Looks pretty cool. And we'll just set this to, a, you know, opacity of like 10 or 12. Something that's going to be very, very subtle in the background. And you can really see that it's it's not necessarily a difficult effect. It's just something that takes... Uh, a little TLC, a little tender love and care, a little bit of time, and you can go through and create this effect, and it's, I don't know, it's really, really cool, I think, at least. So, if you enjoyed this video tutorial, make sure you leave a little like on this video. Drop a comment below if you feel so inclined. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, that way you never miss another video in the future. And hey, I don't know, why would you want to miss another video in the future? I guess that's a little, little self-righteous of me. I apologize for that. But, seriously, you should subscribe to this channel. For creating this shadow depth text effect in Photoshop on colorful text over a nice rich background, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, I'll catch you in the next one.